Julian Schutze here from Blood and Iron Martial Arts, as well as Nicole Smith. We only got one microphone today, so we'll be switching it off as we go along. This is for our mailbag Patreon content. The first question comes from Eric Hardeman concerning the High Cross Shield, which I will be answering. The second question comes from Cody, who's asking about different uses of preem with rapier, which then Nicole will be covering. Our interpretation of the High Cross Shield is very similar to the open side, but just on the other. So I turn my hands counterclockwise, and then it comes at a diagonal downwards angle at their head with my hands high and crossed. This is mildly different from his work, because with his work, my thumb would be on the blade, and the cut would be more horizontal, or slightly ascending. So in terms of using the cut itself as a single time counter, I haven't had too much success, mainly because it's difficult to find a good starting position for it. On the open side, Wrath, wherever your interpretation of that may be, this is a pretty strong opener to deflect the cut right off the bat. For the cross side though, because of the way you have to turn it in your hands, I haven't had too much success from the shoulder. So the most reasonable positions I found would probably be either the high guard, which then I cut downwards, or even shrank hood. Either way, I find both of them less than ideal, but that could just be a situation of me needing to practice that a little bit more. Now, the times I have struck out their weapon at the same time was when they started countering when I was ready for it. So for example, if I throw my first shot and Nicole parries it, we'll pause at the moment of contact, right? I know from this moment that she's probably gonna start throwing a counter. So then as she starts going along, I then use my cut to break through and hit in the head. That's the time I found it most successful in terms of breaking a line of attack is after there's already been one or two actions. And I can predict that my opponent is gonna throw the cut there. But where I've had the most success with the crossed shield specifically was if I follow it up from something else, such as a thrust. If I thrust, she pushes it out of the way, I raise it up. I find this action much faster since you're going from a true edge position to a false edge. or just the beginning of the Myers circle again. So I personally like to open with an undercut. She parries it down low, and then I use my leverage to cut high across. If she then parries it, I would continue the action of the circle. So I have made those work semi-regularly successfully, but then the biggest hindering factor of using it in actual sparring is all the equipment. When you have arm guards, the jacket, Everything else, being able to throw a proper diagonal downwards is excessively difficult and makes it much harder when you're under duress, your opponent's trying to hit you, and it all gets muddled up real quick. Our next question comes from Cody. He asks about the rapier, specifically in Prem. So, our version of Prem were first, if you start in your third position, rotate your hand up, your wrist is in a nice strong position, and the tip is down and across your body. This is what we're looking for, okay? His question asks, using preem either above or below the sword. Typically, you are not gonna start a fight here and come in for your lunge. It is really hard to constrain a blade in first. Usually, when I've used it, it's been in response to something that my opponent has done or what I felt off of their blade. Now, for instance, I'm going to constrain Julian's sword. Well, he's not gonna like that. So <laughs> his response is gonna be trying to push me offline. Well, I wanna keep my point online. So my response to this would be to roll around and step forward. And as much pressure as he wants to push on this, it's not gonna get him anywhere. <laughs> Similar scenario, again, I'm gonna constrain his blade. He's gonna try and go around me the other way. Again, I don't like this. So I'm gonna follow. I'm gonna step around, bring my sword up. It ties him up pretty nicely.
Now as for under. Again, I've constrained him. This time he's going to go for the cut. Cut to the leg, why not? Cuts are fun. But I don't like getting cut to the leg. So my answer to this, again, pass forward, roll into preem, interrupts his cut rather nicely. Now, do be careful with this one. There is a bit of a timing issue involved with it. If I take him offline and I don't step forward fast enough, he's going to have my point off to the side and he's going to land that cut quite nicely. So be careful with that one. Now, the last one I'm going to show you is kind of a fun one. I've actually managed to pull this off in sparring, so I don't feel bad showing you. Starting in tail guard, have your opponent think that you're going to be throwing a cut. Come forward, and land your thrust. <laughs> like I said, it's not something you use very often, but it is fun. Hope that answered your question, Cody. Excellent technique.